Hey everybody, Todd Michael Putnam here from D&D Creative Table Designs bringing you another adventure table idea and this one is the Sinister Secrets of Sewer City. The Sinister Secrets of Sewer City. So I hadn't done a sewer adventure for quite some time so I thought it was time to break out those tiles uh, and it came up with a really fun idea. Of course the players have to go down into the sewers under this major city uh, maybe you know to get it, get something back that was stolen from them from the thieves guild and they saw the the, the culprit uh, take their coin purse or magic weapon or whatever it is and head down in, in through the sewers or maybe they received a tip that there was somebody who was living in the sewers that had information that they needed but in any event uh, the heroes would come down into the sewers to try and uh, find this either the, what was stolen or uh, whatever information they needed to get uh, possibly both. Uh, the first thing I'll say is these these things right here wouldn't be actually placed out there, nor would these guys here, which are which are on plates. I can literally remove these and bring them in any time they're on Dwarven Forge uh, terrain uh, tile plates, and uh, they're magnetic, so they, they hold together really well. So you wouldn't see any of these things right here. The players would eventually would first come into here, and they'd come into the homeless section of the town, uh, and it's the sewer, so. I thought about what would it be like in a homeless section of town and they would build up areas uh, and they would probably have like a small lip or whatever it is so when there's heavy rains and the sewer overflowed a bit it wouldn't necessarily automatically go right into their little shanties. Uh, so I put that little extra tip in there just to try and make it uh, feel a little more realistic as it were. Uh, but the players would come through this area here and this one and this one over here which is all the homeless area of town. Uh, these are all vagabonds and drunks and druggies or people just down and out or cast out of society for whatever reason. Uh, and so these are the people that are living here that are just uh, the vulnerable population. Uh, and they could certainly have information uh, about what the players needed or a little bit of information about what life was like here in Sewer City uh, and uh, things to be careful of or wary of. Uh, but they may also lie. They could be insane. Uh, they could just not bother to want to respond to anything or, or run away in fear. Uh, you don't know how they would behave. So, uh, and if they were threatened, one of them was threatened, you never know. They might all gang up together and, and fight the players off. Um, you know, throwing raw sewage and stuff at them. Uh, and of course, the sewers itself, whenever anybody's finished with anything done in a place like this, they literally just throw it into the sewers. So there's going to be barrels and boxes and broken crates and stuff that is there. And that's what's going on in that area. Uh, over in this area, a little bit further down the sewer, is where the plague doctors are. And the plague doctors don't create the plague, but they, uh, they are practicing their forbidden uh, art of science, uh, where they're trying to uh, understand what it is that's causing plagues and stuff that are happening and uh, infections. And so they're studying all that stuff. Um, they're uh, obviously the church and everybody else is against this and so uh, they're forced underground and so they come into this area and they bring all of their their illegal books and stuff and their uh, their apothecary and, and, and all their mixing of potions and stuff uh, and they come and they basically prey on the vulnerable population they're gonna they're gonna go over to the homeless people when they get sick and stuff and they're gonna offer their help um, which may, may succeed and may not because they're practicing science and they don't really understand it that well. Uh, and so they, they don't do well. But you can see there's a number of plague victims uh, that are lying around here uh, next to the brazier uh, trying to keep warm uh, as, the, uh, as the various plague doctors go about uh, try, tending to them and, and mixing new potions and stuff or, uh, or healing herbs together to try and cure them. And of course, you can see one of the other plague doctors over here just walking down through the, uh, the what, what I call Main Street, the, the, the main sewer drain or whatever it is, the main street of uh, Sewer City, uh, looking for other victims and stuff that, uh, that they can help. So that's what's happening in that section there. That's the plague doctors. Over in this section down here, uh, following this one, is where the Thieves Guild is, and that might be something the players are after. Again, these things wouldn't be in here. Those would be placed in time, and I'm going to explain that in just a moment. But uh, over here is the Thieves Guild. Of course, since there's only one way in and out of the Thieves Guild down the main uh, sewer lane, there's, uh, the, there's individuals that are hiding in the shadows or that they've got uh, crossbows and stuff, 
and they're uh, they're ready to shoot anybody that doesn't belong coming down that can't use the uh, the safe word or the password uh, to identify themselves as a member of the guild uh, and take them out and keep their uh, their location safe and secure. Uh, furthermore, you get into here is just more thieves guild stuff. There's a set of uh, rungs leading up to the surface from this particular area here for the escape to. Uh, this here is where the big uh, big boss guy is, and he's of course got his uh, treasure chest. Uh, there and he's counting out his gold from his uh, thieving operations. Uh, over here is uh, where the common area for the, the thieves are. There's some food there, there's some weapon racks, there's some supplies and stuff. Uh, just like there's another small area right here uh, that, the, that the thieves uh, conduct their business and gamble and, and uh, sleep uh, and, and stuff like that between runs. So that's what's going on in that area there. And then you come down a little bit farther and in this area, we find that there is someone else who would be found in sewers, a necromancer and his acolytes who are practicing their, uh, their, uh, their wicked incantations and, uh, and invocations to try and raise the dead. And so uh, conveniently for them, whenever the, uh, the plague doctors fail to heal somebody uh, and they die, the uh, necromancer is more than happy for a few gold to take them off their hands and the plague doctors want the gold because they need it to uh, buy their expensive books and, uh, and get their expensive reagents and stuff for uh, treating. So they take the gold from the necromancers who then try and uh, raise the, uh, or I should say animate the dead back up to serve them. Uh, and so that's what they're doing in there right now. They, there's, there's a body here that's on a, on a uh, altar and there's of course an evil necromancer getting ready to uh, slice him open and perform whatever profane rites are necessary in order to uh, raise the dead. But uh, that's not all. They, uh, the necromancers don't just rely on them. They of course will go up into the, the main town or into the vulnerable areas of the, uh, the homeless population and they'll drag people in and they've got a, a small cage basically that they've barred off uh, that they just throw people in there and wait for them to die so that they can then use their bodies for their horrific uh, experiments. So they, uh, the necromancers don't, uh, don't risk waiting on people dying. They, uh, they assist the process. Going further down the uh, sewer lines here, we come to uh, a forgotten area. Uh, it may have served a purpose some time ago, but it, nobody knows what it is now, and it's infested with rats. Uh, and that's a broken door and if anybody goes in there there's going to be a couple of dead bodies in there that may or may not have something that the players were looking for maybe somebody they were chasing after fled down in this direction and got killed by the uh, the giant rats when they were attempting to hide uh, whatever the case may be there are a couple of bodies here and they're they're not guarded per se but there are certainly a bunch of rats in this area that are uh, hungry and always willing to, to do a little extra work in order to to get some food so that's the basic idea of uh, the sewer city and, and who's in there and why they're in there now. But as the players go through and they're talking to people, it's a, there's a mystery within the mystery, which is there's rumors that people are disappearing uh, and uh, nobody knows why. They, they can't find any bodies. They're literally just disappearing. And, and they've checked you know, they've, as best as they could. It's, it's not the necromancers. It's, uh, it's not the plague doctors. Uh, it's not the thieves guild stealing from them. Uh, in fact, some of the thieves have gone missing. Some of the plague doctors have gone missing. It's a, it's a real mystery and nobody knows what, what's causing it. And the players go searching in the area where people were last seen and they make their perception checks. This wouldn't be here, nor would this be here. But let's say that uh, one, of the air, one of the homeless people was disappeared at this location. If they make their perception check, they'll see that there is a trapdoor hole in the ceiling. Uh, and if the players climb up and check into it, they'll see that there's some kind of burrows. And if they make their nature check, they'll determine that this isn't like a natural cave that the, and it's not something that's dug out by people. There's some kind of an insect or snake or something that's uh, creating this. And although I don't lay the whole thing out, this here, this is the hole that will come up through. There's usually one of these insect creatures or whatever that's guarding it. Uh, and that's what's happening is these insects are just abducting bodies and pulling, pulling them up and uh, bringing them back to the main nest. So no matter which one of the areas that they go from, they all have the, uh, a series of tunnels and stuff that isn't laid out specifically per se. But if the players decide that they're going to try and track through and find it, uh, then what I would do is I would lay this one out 
And of course you put the players on there and this just represents the myriad of tunnels that the insects have dug all around Sewer City uh, as they found basically a fresh supply of food and victims for their purposes. And so they've dug all around and they're basically attacking the victim, the, the, the people of Sewer City uh, who certainly are not protected by the guards or anyone like that. Uh, these are all very vulnerable people or people that won't be missed if, uh, if they do die. And so uh, they found basically an easy source of prey. So I would lay this out and put the players here and say, you know, 30 minutes after tracking through the tunnels, there's just a maze of tunnels uh, going off in a myriad of directions. Uh, but suddenly you start hearing some chittering type sounds uh, and there's some clawing and it sounds like uh, some kind of a tough exoskeleton or nails or something that's digging in through the dirt coming in your, your way. And of course, the players would arrange themselves however they want. And then these guys, which are the tunnel guards, would come out and they would have to fight them here uh, in, in however they want. And this, this is just basically representative of the maze of tunnels. Rather than try to lay the whole thing out, you just put something like this on it and theater of mine them until they get to the certain area and then you say there's an encounter and you lay this out you just rotate it around or flip the stuff around real quickly uh, if you want to have more than one encounter and then eventually if they travel far enough through I'll pull this over here uh, they will make it back to the queen's lair in uh, yeah, in this section and the, the queen of course has victims webbed up and she's got a bunch of eggs there and she's happily munching on some victims and when the the eggs hatch they do the same they they munch away on some victims and of course the queen is the toughest of all of them so the players have their epic fight and uh, again you just see a number of tunnels going off in a variety of directions so you just pick one that you say the players are coming in from and you can see that that you know they're going some are going up some are just going straight across or whatever it is so trying to give that feeling that the tunnels are an absolute 3d maze that the players have gone through and they finally discovered the main nest um, so they can put a stop to uh, the disappearance of people of course when they finally do that uh, and they bring back the carcass of the queen and they show those who said that they've got people that are missing uh, and they can show some of the webbed bodies and stuff and say this is what the cause was well then they've built street cred with the people who live in under uh, in the uh, sewer city and uh, that kind of street cred of oh okay so you you did this you protected us you saved us you stopped the killings from occurring and the disappearing uh, the you know kidnappings or abductions from happening further so that gets them some street cred where they normally wouldn't have any because People living in a sewer are, are, are understandably hard to trust others. Uh, and so that would, uh, that would allow the play players to get some more information about what's actually going on or what they were seeking, uh, if they're trying to get their stuff back, who might actually have it, where they would be, etc., and so on and so forth. So it's a little mystery within a mystery where they interact with some homeless people, they interact with the plague doctors, they potentially interact with the thieves' guild, uh, they interact with necromancers and stuff, or victims that are in this cage, they might come across them first, depending. Uh, there's a whole lot of people that they have to interact with who all have their own purposes and uh, needs and uh, issues that they're dealing with. Uh, it gives you a lot of opportunity for role play, but on top of that, then there's a little bit of a murder mystery going on that when they solve that, uh, that might give them some, some information they need. And of course, there's always the opportunity for combat in that if they cost the help of the homeless people, um, if they're working particularly for the city, uh, if they have a city guard emblem on them or they've received a, a badge that says that they can work for the sheriff or whatever it is, then are the plague doctors going to uh, want to work with them? Hell no, they're not going to trust them because they're afraid that they're going to get reported back to the authorities. Uh, obviously, the same would be the, uh, to be said of the necromancer and without a doubt, the Thieves Guild certainly wouldn't take kindly to that. So there's certainly lots of opportunities for combat as well. Uh, but there's plenty of opportunities for role play, and then on top of that, it's got a little bit of a murder mystery going on. So that's it. That is Sewer City. Uh, as far as what all this is made of, the vast majority of it is Dwarven Forge. Uh, the overwhelming majority of it is Dwarven Forge. So there's these are their actual sewer tiles right here, uh, and then these are their regular dungeon tiles, and these are their burrows from their Dungeons of Doom. Uh, these These guys right here these are all their burrows I love these things these are so fantastic very modular um love those things and then there's a variety of 3d print stuff that i've got in there like uh basically ramshackle houses and stuff uh some 3d printed boxes and barrels and crates uh from whiz kids i've got a number of fires 
that the homeless people have, because you would imagine they'd for cooking their, their gruel or whatever it is. We've got some fires on that. Uh, this lighted LED is a, is a brazier from Dwarven Forge. Uh, these are, I want to say these are 3D printed bookshelves and stuff, but they might not be. I can't remember. I just got them off of eBay a, a long time ago. So, And then the, uh, the battle mat itself is a vinyl battle mat from, I want to say, Noble Knight Games. Uh, the advantage of vinyl battle mats is that they roll up smaller and that they cost you less. The disadvantage is that the sunlight and stuff will bounce off of them and you can get a glare for your player's eye. So please uh, please be aware of that if you decide to get any. But I believe that one came from Noble Knight Named Games. And last but not least, my, uh, my DM screen is from Stat Trackers from their latest Kickstarter. Uh, this thing is great. It's for 5e. Uh, and it's all original artwork uh, with a lot of great necessary D&D stuff on the back side of it. So uh, go over to, uh, it's actually at topdoggames.net, topdoggames.net, uh, where you can get the stat tracker uh, DMs uh, screen. So there it is. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the videos and if you uh, uh, like the content and want to see more. Uh, hit that uh, bell notification if you want to see when new videos come up. But I usually come up with uh, new videos at least once a week for new adventures. And uh, I will see you next adventure. Thanks for watching and uh, see you then. Take care. Bye.